Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. Thanksgiving Day 2023. Let's get into it. So the first thing that you kind of need to know, <laughs> this, is a, this is amazing. There is a 1,000 Turkish boat armada sailing uh, for Gaza. Now, they're not military. Uh, they have no military equipment. They're bringing humanitarian aid. Now, I wonder how the warmongering Democrats, how the warmongering Democrats are going to be able to stop all of these uh, boats coming in. You know, if, if, is, if Israel starts blowing up Turkish boats with them bringing in humanitarian aid to the Palestinians, well, I dare say that uh, that's going to not look good on the world stage. What do you think? Are you a Christian? Do you want the people in Gaza to have a little bit of humanitarian aid? Or are you all for, uh, it seems like, uh, like Sean Hannity or Todd Stearns or Mark Levin or Ben Shapiro? I mean, they, they just want to blow the hell out of these 1,000 boats bringing in humanitarian aid, right? Seems to me that's what they want. And, uh, and of course, a few of my uh, right-wing friends, uh, obviously the people in uh, Gaza need to be relocated, exterminated, uh, collateral damage, uh, genocide, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so yeah, let's just keep going. So the other piece of news that I found very interesting today was uh, Russia used, uh, well, and what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Remember what, back when Biden said, uh, well, you know what, we don't have any more uh, 155 millimeter uh, ammunition. Give them cluster rounds. He opened that door. Now, Russia, to their credit, was not using cluster munitions up until that point. But then the Ukrainians, oh, they gladly accepted those cluster munitions and they started using them. Well, guess what? Guess what? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. So now Russia is employing cluster munitions, but they're not just the average cluster munitions because the ones that we gave to Ukraine are good against troops on the ground. Uh, but if you've got... If you're in an armored vehicle or you've got some cover, uh, more or less, you're going to survive a cluster bomb uh, going off. And that's why the 155 millimeter rounds were better for taking out uh, armored uh, equipment or hitting uh, bunkers. No, these new, these are new and improved Russian cluster munitions. And they've got armor piercing uh, ability and they're taking out on a wide range uh, what's left of Ukraine's uh, armored vehicles. So guess what, you neocon lunatic Graham, uh, Lindsey Graham or uh, Mitch McConnell or any of you right-wing lunatics. was I talked already about this and, and by the way I went back and I watched that video and I kept thinking maybe I'll record some of this no I'll just go watch redacted on the January 6 footage that's come out it shows Nancy Pelosi and the FBI planned everything and the Capitol Police all right I already said that in a previous video but I just I just want you to go and watch that it's it's unbelievable what our government the lies the lies that come out that they tell the American people and everybody's so gullible. Oh, the Democrats. You know, the Democrats are the stupidest people on the planet. They'll believe anything the government tells them. Oh, my God. Uh, so the other thing was, um, um, now, if you haven't been following the war, and you probably haven't, is the Ukrainians have established a, uh, a beachhead across the Napa River. And uh, But guess what, Russia... It, this is what you provoked Russia into. You, when you, I've said it in many times. Poke the bear, poke the bear, poke the bear, poke the bear. And guess what? The bear is going to fight back. They've done it for a thousand years. And now we're seeing the results. 
of the warmongering idiot lunacy Democrats that what they've caused to the world. So now Russia has night vision drones. So the Ukrainians are trying to float these boats across the Napa River and establish a beachhead. And they were being able to do this at night. Now, 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 now Russia's hitting them with those night vision drones. So uh, anyway, all right, next piece of news. Uh, by the way, this is, like I said, this is the Thanksgiving Day special of that cybersecurity guy, which all 10 of you watch. So SpaceX, uh, they launched their new super heavy uh, launcher uh, rocket. Uh, man, it was impressive. And, you know, I want you to understand, you know, what they're doing. And, and this is how you rapidly develop things. Because in the past, we had NASA, we had government, uh, we had the uh, governments around the world that were over top of their space agencies. No, when you, when you put it in, they were for profit. Okay, if you have military industrial complex for profit, or if you have a space agency for profit, guess what? You're not going to make much progress. Okay, but that's why Russia is churning out tanks, missiles, and everything, because their military industrial complex is not for profit. It's for winning the war. It's for a specific task of, of equipping and rearming the entire Russian million, 1.2 million man military, which is way beyond what we have here in the United States, especially with the equipment that they're developing. And, uh, and you know, if, if our government had two brain cells, we would nationalize the uh, military industrial complex, take it out of the, the private hands of Northrop Grumman or, uh, or any of the, the other companies and, and, and basically make it to defend the United States. But no, 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 because you know what? Because all the politicians get kickbacks from that money. They get kickbacks. So why would they ever want to nationalize it? Because then guess what? Now, now that the government owns the military industrial complex, they don't get no money no more unless they're going to like, you know, pillage it right out of the tax money, which would probably prove more difficult to do than the lobbyists coming in and just kind of with, uh, you know, uh, shell corporations just kicking that money back to them. Why do you think they all live in million dollar houses, huh? All right, so let's get into, uh, uh, so the super heavy launcher, it, it, it did really well. It made it through the second phase, and uh, and then it kind of blew up. Uh, but this is this is the way you make progress. So the, six months ago was the first launch. So this is the second launch. And so what they're doing, and everybody says, oh, it's a failure. It's a failure. It didn't work. No, no. You 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 put all your technology into it. You put all kinds of sensors on there so that all your scientists can look at it. Because what is Elon Musk motivated by? He wants to get to Mars. He's not in it for the profit. He wants, he's got this vision of, of, of putting a man on Mars. And, and so, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he doesn't want to lose money in the proposition, but he's not really out to make a ton of money. And he doesn't have a bunch of shareholders that he has to pay money to. And he's certainly not giving kickbacks to the politicians. And that's why the SpaceX program has been so damn successful, in spite, in spite of the corruption in the United States. So anyway, uh, but it, it, it's, it was a huge progress. I imagine the next launch might be a total success. Uh, that'll probably be about six months from now. Uh, man, I tell you, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a space person. You know, I, I'm a Star Trek fan. I think it's freaking fantastic that Elon Musk is doing this. I, I, I worship the guy in a lot of ways. Now, and free speech advocate. I mean, he's, he's a lot of blowback. Media matters, man. I'm glad he's suing those idiots. Uh, the leftists. All right, so let's get to the next piece. Uh, well, we've got, if you want to watch the Military Summary Channel on uh, YouTube, um, we've got thousands of Ukrainian troops deserting and surrendering at this point, uh, much more so than in the early point of the war. Uh, and uh, that's a sign that you know they're, they're, their defenses are crumbling. I'm watching the Battle of Andivka, I know I'm not pronouncing that properly, but, uh, you know, Bakhmut is still going on to a certain extent, but uh, pretty much Ukraine is done at this point. And I, and I told you this early on in my videos. Nobody listens to that cybersecurity guy. I, you know, I don't understand it. But, you know, when I get proven right 
is anybody going to say, well, gosh, dang it, you know, you, you told us that, that spending $80 billion on Ukraine was a bad idea when we should have been spending on the American people or securing our border. But no, the warmongering Democrats, they want open borders. They want fentanyl killing hundreds of thousands of Americans. They want uh, crime in the streets. I mean, the Democrats are like a plague. They're like locusts. Everywhere they go, they destroy. You know, that's just my opinion. Uh, let's get back into the next uh, piece of news here. So Putin and G. well, let's watch Putin right now. We call for joint efforts of the international community aimed at de-escalating the situation, a ceasefire and finding a political solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. And the BRICS states and countries of the region could play a key role in this work. There you go. So that was Putin. And then uh, and this was from Judge Napolitano. I... Uh, Gee, and, and what I want you to understand is I'm not just showing you these videos. The United States is losing on the world stage uh, because the whole world is realizing that we're just a paper tiger. Our military sucks. All of our military equipment's been destroyed in Ukraine. Uh, Russia's getting contracts all around the world selling their new and improved military equipment. I've already told you about the, the night vision drones and uh, uh, the new cluster munitions that can blow up armored equipment. I mean, good God knows what else they've got. they got the hypersonic missiles. You think we got hypersonic missiles here in the United States? Oh, you, we're king of the hill? Hell no. All right, so uh, anyway, let's watch G uh, from uh, Judge, Judge Napolitano on YouTube. G of China, their, their translation is written, so I will, I will read it aloud um, for the benefit of our friends and colleagues who are um, experiencing... Uh, judging freedom uh, audio only. The root cause of the Palestinian Israeli situation is the fact that the right of the Palestinian people to statehood, their right to existence, and their right of return have long been ignored. I have emphasized on many occasions that the only viable way to break the cycle of Palestinian Israeli conflict lies in the two-state solution in the restoration of the legitimate national rights of palestine and in the establishment of an independent state of palestine there can be no sustainable peace and security in the middle east without a just palestine china calls for early convening of an international peace conference China calls for an early convening of an international peace conference that is more authoritative to build international consensus for peace and work toward an early solution to the question of Palestine that is comprehensive, just, and sustainable. All right, so that was Yi. All right, and that's... Uh, so what, what I want you to interpret from those videos is how they're taking the high road. I mean, do you think that the, the African nations... The collective punishment of Palestinian civilians through the unlawful use of force by Israel is a war crime. The deliberate denial of medicine, fuel, food and water to the residents of Gaza is tantamount to genocide. Are the, uh, the South American nations or, or nations all around the world aren't looking at this and saying who's on the right side and who's on the wrong side? Seems to me that Russia and, uh, and uh, China are on the right side of this thing because uh, we're going to just continue to support Israel in, in their extermination of uh, the, the Palestinian people. Doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Uh, the next piece of news was a car exploded on the Canadian border. Now, I've, I was going to throw up a video about that, but there just wasn't, wasn't anything that I saw that was spectacular. You just kind of like side footage. It was a big explosion. Who knows? Uh, but I do believe that, uh, and, and by the way, it, the, the thing that I wanted to point out from that explosion was and, and I've heard people, you know, every now and then you get a person that calls in on talk radio because when I go for my hikes, I just listen to talk radio. I, I, and I just, most of it, I just blot out. But there's been a, quite a few people that have called in and said, no, we don't just need to worry about the southern border. We need to worry about the northern border. And they're saying that a lot of, of a bad uh, hoospa is coming across that northern border. And so this, this car blowing up on the northern border obviously filled with explosives. 
Are these terrorists that just got caught and how many more bombs that have come across the northern border? I do think we need to worry about our northern border as well as the southern border. Of course, the Democrats don't give a shit. They don't give a shit about you or me. They got their power in Washington, D.C. You know, they, they love their open borders. You and I can all die before all they care. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, so that was the, the next thing. I, this was an interesting piece of news that the polls in California and New York have Trump gaining by double-digit numbers. <laughs> I mean, who would have thought two Democrat states? Now, you have to remember that the reason that the Republicans took the uh, House of Representatives was it was New York uh, districts that elected a few Republicans um, to their House of Representatives, and that's what turned the tide. So are we seeing California and New York turn a bit more red? I think so. I think so. I posted a brief video. Uh, you can check it out on uh, any of my channels, uh, YouTube, X, or Rumble, uh, that Javier in, 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 um, uh, in Argentina, uh, boy, I tell you, he, he, he looks like a good guy. I think he's going to do good. Uh, I didn't think that his pe pegging his currency to the U.S. dollar is a good idea, but he's just... If he just does it temporarily, I think it's going to work out for him. And because uh, with 120% inflation, what are you going to do? you got to try something. And so it looks like Argentina had had enough of the socialist leftist, uh, you know, Democrat. I want to call them Democrats because that's, you know, that's, that's who I would look at as, as in charge of Argentina. So they finally threw him out and they're going to try something different. It's going to be a huge experiment. Let's see what it looks like. And he's, by the way, he's, he's a big Trump supporter and Trump supports him. So uh, this could be what's coming for us. I pray to God that Trump gets elected. Uh, let's see. Full U.S. LA. Yeah. So this was another one. The home price index is inflated beyond belief. And so we're seeing the greatest real estate bubble in the history of, of the United States. And, and while it's already popping in commercial real estate, you think your home's worth, <clears throat> what, three, well, three, three, let's say 350000 Well, back during 2008, I remember my house in, in Michigan was worth 140000 and then it was worth 40000 Expect the same. It's coming. Uh, SD Bullion's holding a Black Friday sale. Uh, I picked up, uh, they got these cowboy rounds that uh, for $1.99 over spot, and then they're offering one SD bullion round for at spot. Now, granted, uh, the price of silver is a bit inflated right now, but if you want to pick up uh, your Thanksgiving Day present, that was my Black Friday sale. I, you know, if, if you watch, if you're especially in, if you're in Florida or any of the Sunshine States, Every other commercial on YouTube is about solar panels. Is solar panels a good idea? I don't know. I'm putting them on my house because it's supposedly being paid for by the Democrats. Uh, thank you, Democrats. We'll see how it works out. I hope that it's a good idea. I've heard horror stories about solar panels, and I've heard good news about solar panels. All I know is what I've been told, and, and I, I assume it's, it's in writing. I got the contract that my electric bills are going to go down to $88 per month for the next 25 years and that supposedly that's frozen into a contract so as utilities go up come and go or rise and fall i know that sometimes my bills during the summer are, are upwards of 180 dollars a month and then during you know the in the off season when when i'm not running the air conditioning or the heat or anything here in florida my bills can be down at 50 dollars. so i just wanted to average the whole thing out so we'll see i'll let you know how in a future video how the solar panels work out um, so, uh, the other thing was, uh, I wanted to, to tell you, if you're investing in real estate, uh, the flippers are going to get destroyed. <laughs> I'm just sorry. If you're flipping houses and you own a bunch of real estate, you're just, you're, it's, it, you're gone. Uh, but cash flow investing is still not a bad idea. I would wait because I think you're going to be able to kick what, when I call cash flow investing, I'm talking about rental properties. Uh, because that generates your cash flow in. You know, you buy it at a certain price, you get a certain number of renters, you're going to have a certain number of vacant properties, you're going to have certain maintenance costs, you're going to have insurance costs. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I watch the um, uh, Real Estate Ninja or the Economic Ninja, if you want to call them that. I don't think I want to get into that business. It just seems like a hell of a lot of work. 
I'm more of just like SD bullion, you know, pick up a silver coin here and there. And well, you know, when, when the dollar dies, at least I'll have some money on the side. And, and how in the world I'm going to barter that, I have no idea. He's got some videos on how to buy and sell silver. I figure I'll just go back and watch those on YouTube and, and figure out. And by the way, I do keep all my boxes and stuff so that if I do order a silver coin here and there, that I'll be able to ship it back. Um, so, uh, let's see. For, by the way, the, the, the average cost of a house right now, it used to take four years of income to buy a house. Uh, we are now with the increase in the interest rates up to seven years of income to buy a house. How many people do you think are going to be able to buy a house at that price? I can't imagine very many. So the affordability of buying a house is down 40% because of interest rates. You don't think a real estate crash is coming? <laughs> I, get it. I got some swamp land here in Florida to say. Uh, the, uh, the last thing was I did want to talk about things personally. Uh, because it could relate to you, and that is don't let projects linger at this point because you don't know when the stuff is going to hit the fan. So, for example, I backed my car into the garage with the hatch open, and I forgot the damn hatch, and I, I tore it up on the top of the garage because it sits up so high. Right now it's in the shop getting fixed. It's going to cost me $250, and I did want to talk about this because uh, handle on the law. So I thought what I would do, because I didn't want to make a claim with the insurance company because I didn't want my insurance rates to go up, uh, was I thought it, I would just take it into a shop and get it repaired myself. Well, if you do that and the shop messes up the work or you're not happy with the job, now I'm, I just did very minimal amount of damage. It's still $1,000. It's about, well, 1000 about 1100 or so. But... If you don't have an entity like an insurance company standing between you and the body shop, that's a bad idea. So I understand you don't want your insurance to go up by making a claim every other month or every other two months or every six months. But if you're only making a claim, well, hopefully, you know, once every couple years, you know, definitely have the insurance company involved and, and do what they tell you to do. Now, understand that if they send you to a body shop, they have a relationship with that body shop. They know that there, there's been very few people that have come back and said, you know, they did poor work. Uh, you know, we're going to sue. We're going we're gonna to get uh, lawyers involved. The insurance company knows that by work, because they, basically they have to have go through an approval process. That body shop has to go through an approval process. So definitely always engage your insurance company before you take a car to a body shop and, and, and get them involved. Now, even if you don't even meet your deductible, okay? Now, I mean, I know you're scared. Oh, I filed a claim and it didn't meet my deductible because my deductible is two hundred and fifty. Yours might be 500 or 1000 A lot of people's deductible is $1,000. So you might not even meet that $1,000, but you still, I mean, do you think the insurance company is going to penalize you? Which they might, I don't know for sure. But I mean, I, you know, if you don't meet that $1,000 deductible, at least you've got the insurance company between you and the body shop, even if it all comes out of your pocket. Okay, just saying, just saying. Uh, so, and, and, and by the way, don't, and why is, what I was saying also is don't let projects linger around your house. So, for example, I'm taking two trees out on the side of the house, and I was moving rock all day yesterday. I took the day off today, and that's why I'm making this long video for you. Uh, now, if, if the dollar tanks or, or inflation continues or, or we uh, the real estate market tanks or the stock market tanks, Am I going to be able to pay these guys to come in and take those trees out for $400? No, they might just say, no, we can't do it, man. You know, we're, the dollar is worthless at this point. So what I'm telling you is to get as much done now as you can. Replace that washer and dryer. Replace that dishwasher. Replace that hot water heater. Get those trees taken out on the side. Put your solar panels on the roof. Get your car fixed. Get it all done now while the dollar's worth something. Don't let projects around your house linger, okay? And another project is I got a toilet that I was wrenching on, and I finally realized that I was not the man for the job, so I got the plumber coming in next week to fix that. 
Uh, stay on top of your finances. That's another huge tip. So I can't tell you the number of times it's becoming much and more, much and much more often that I log in online and I'm going to pay off a credit card or I'm going to transfer some money or I'm going to move some money to my investment firm or, uh, or I'm going to pay my, uh, cause I, I'm still paying on the windows that I put on the house and I can't get logged in. So what I'm telling you is pay that credit card every other day. You know, you go to the grocery store, you get the bill. It's going to take three or four days for that charge to show up on your credit card. Log in online, just transfer the money and pay it off, you know. And I, and I, I would say do that at least once a week. Any less than that, you're being stupid. And make sure you're on top of everything else, you know. Make sure your mortgage is paid up six months in advance. Make sure, you know, any bills, I've got my uh, cable, I mean, my um, fiber bill paid uh, one month in advance. That's, that's just in case, because if I can't log in to pay it, I don't want them cutting me off from the internet. So I got it one month in advance. Who cares? It's $65. Pay your damn bills in advance where you can. And, and I don't recommend, you know, well, on a limited basis, you can have automatic payment. But sometimes, like I had a catastrophic event, I went to my mortgage company and I paid the mortgage. It, well, actually, I was paying on the principal. And for whatever reason, I don't know what they did because they, they were under cyber attack. They billed me for a whole month's payment plus the additional payment that I had made. It wiped out my checking account. Now, luckily, I was able to get in there because it was a pending payment and transfer some funds to cover the, the cost of that. So... What I'm saying is, is make sure, you know, that you're, you're on top of everything every day. Uh, last, uh, yeah, and use the insurance company. So that's it for this video. We'll always finish off with some Russian hardware. Let's watch that video. Пятьдесят шесть, пятьдесят четыре, заряд полный, один снаряд зарядить. Ведем готов, прицел двести девяносто шесть, пятьдесят шесть, пятьдесят четыре. Орудие. Орудие. Заводи, поехали. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.